Hi everyone, Brett back. Altitude scale modeling, spur review, new kit. Some of us have been waiting a long time for a new 48 scale Lancaster. HK models came through. Mark 1. There will be all the other marks. Those of you who know, Tamiya's kit was made in the 70s. At the time, it was state of the art. It's got raised panel lines. I have a few of them. It's still fun to build. But we needed a new one. Beautiful box art. Let's see because of the glare, but there's 362 parts, 648 millimeter wingspan, 443 millimeter length. There's some of the CAD drawings, warnings, a little bit about the high quality plastic model kit intended for modelers 14 and up. Other side, you've got one scheme. Two schemes, and you can see Avril Lancaster series. Just like the B17 series, there'll be more. Take all this beautiful box art. <clears throat> you've got instructions. You've got a big clear sprue with cardboard backing. You've got one, two, looks like the dam bus is on right there. Two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve screws. About. Decals, a little bit of photo etch. And, top it all off, they give you a nice print of the artwork. I like it a lot. Hang that right up there on the wall with the rest of them. So there, I'm going to set that aside. We are going to start with a fuselage half. Let's get you zoomed in here. Self-sealing bags? Yes. No staples. Here's the first win over Tammy. All right. You've got rivets everywhere. Rivet, rivet, rivet. The whole thing. All the way around. Rivets. Obviously, it was on a sprue because they cut it off the sprue. I wish they wouldn't do that so close because you get the wrong guy who had a bad day at lunch and he's going to put a little divot in your kit. But there's, they cut these above so you will have to sand them, but they are cut off. The inside, all the detail you would expect from quality. Back to the rivets. Rivets everywhere. I love it. Okay. Obviously, you have another one. And this one has something else in it. Let's not cheat you. So, again. Rivets, 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 all the way around the top, around the bottom, no fading out of the panel lines or the rivets, inside, again you've got some more cut off, or they cut, someone cut it off the sprue, but they're all good, they're all a little raised, and these look like engine covers. Or air intakes for the engines, but I could be wrong. So, let's get these out of the way. Move on to two sets of wings. We only need to open one because there's nothing hidden in the box or the bag. Except wings, upper and lower. Sorry for the bag wrestling. I'll turn it down in editing. Alright, again, wonderful rivet and access panel detail. They don't go together because... Well, we've got these in the way. Let's check it out, see if they can... Yeah, just together. 
At least this one does. So, seems to fit really well right there. But let's look at it individually. Lower wing. Again. I'd say hundreds, probably thousands of rivets. And the access panels. Screw heads on them. And the inside, nothing much on the inside of this one. Uh, upper wing. Again, loads of rivets, panel lines, ailerons, which are closed. But the flaps can be positioned. This access panel here looks really nice. detail is outstanding. There's the detail inside the flaps. There are ejector pin marks inside of every, looks like every other one has an ejector pin mark in it. That's either going to be need to be cleaned up or puttied over. Or you close the flaps. Your call. But the fit seems nice. And there is of course cleanup that needs done, but fit on the edge of the wing. I'm thinking they're going to be great. So you got your wings. Let's go with engine nacelles, elevators, Okay, elevators, tails, same exquisite detail. Looks like all the ejector pins are sunk down in here, so they'll be right in your way. The tails are one piece, nice touch. And then the connection between the tails. So, you've got your fabric. Right there, you can see how it's all tightly pushed up against it, as fabric would be in these situations. Again, this is going to take a wash. Really nice there, vertical stabilizers, rudders, and then on here, the center sections. Just amazing, and I've never seen a Lancaster in person, but some of you have. There's the other side. I'm sure there's plenty of pictures on the internet. You can find out how realistic all this rivet detail is. You can see the bracing inside of there. Looks very realistic as well. You know what? These are the flaps. I'm almost sure of it. We'll find out when we get the instructions. Engine nacelles and landing gear doors. And there are no ejector pins inside the landing gear doors. That's wonderful. It looks like these panels can be cut open to display engines, which there are in here. Okay. Again, Hate to keep reading myself, but lots of rivet detail, great panel line detail, all throughout. You've got your wing spar structure inside. A few ejector pin marks in these doors if you cut them open, you have to clean up, but again, none inside the landing gear doors. Wonderful. Alright, let's go to the engines and those wheels.
and uh, landing gear struts. These two matching sprues. Let's say we only get one out, but only one won't come out. So fully, wonderfully detailed engines, and I love building engines. It looks like you get all four engines, superchargers, landing gear struts, weight on wheels, your uh, spinner covers, duh, exhaust, is that open? No, it's not open. And I do see maybe, or maybe it's the light, and yeah, there's this light bar line on the landing gear legs but there's outstanding wiring detail of these engines the cylinders your spinners there's your wheels with the weight on the other half of your engine block your supercharger other side so there's good detail on the supercharger, or turbocharger. I'm sure it's a supercharger, but I could be wrong. A wonderful detail on that. Your exhaust again. There's your landing gear legs. So, two of those. Cockpit parts. Little kids. This one has two different sprues in it. We'll start here. Looks like the floor, the top of the lane, or the Bombay instrument panel. I bet Airscale does a great, we'll do a great instrument panel. Bulkheads. All around, rudder pedals, looks like radios. So, I don't see any ejector pin marks in the top of the Bombay, which is good. There are in the bottom, but that doesn't matter. They're in the back of the bulkheads, but not the front of the bulkheads. Same here. So, let's start here with the bulkheads. I'm assuming these are the insides of the uh, Bombay. Rudder pedals, radio, some more of the instrumentation, bracing for something. These, I would assume, I could be wrong, are either bomb racks. Yeah, I'm thinking they're bomb racks. There is a beautiful instrument panel. And there, it's got to be the top of your Bombay. Flip side, ejector pin marks. Not sure what all these are. Back of the instrument panel. <clears throat> Depending how much is that seen through the greenhouse, you may want to wire it up and stuff. And then this one. Looks like your cockpit floor. Not sure about this part. More radios, side panels, oxygen tanks, and uh, weights for the ailerons. All your radios. A couple more bulkheads, another side to the cockpit. Alright, so whatever this part is. There are no ejector pins in here. There are on the other side. So. There's your radios. More of your instrumentation. Floor of your cockpit, which has no ejector pin marks. There's those fine weights. There's your oxygen tanks fire extinguishers, more radios, bulkheads, more radios, 
everything on this side, this is more instrumentation there, no ejector pin marks on anything on this side. And this side is where they all are. Thinking this is more bracing for the landing gear, it could be wrong. Alright, that's those two. Lots of good sprueage going on. This one's got some delicate parts like uh, control sticks, machine guns, throttles. These look like the Bombay doors. Alright, Bombay doors. There are ejector pin marks on the insides of the Bombay doors. They're all recessed. And there's also rivet detail. So, if you have the frame of mind in the equipment and the time, I'd punch out a very thin piece of styrene to use to fill those. Because if you start sanding away, you may sand because it's, when this one right here is right next to a rivet line. So you're going to have to fill them somehow. And try not damaging rivet lines. The outside, just like the rest of the fuselage, beautiful rivet and panel line detail. I'm just surprised they didn't put some other pins to push this out with. Here, it said you've got, looks like throttles, your seats, seat backs, turrets, the guns do not have open muzzles, but they are nicely detailed in one piece. So, let's get into the guns, turrets, turret rings, sides of the seat, back of the seat. This looks like a cap in case you don't use a turret for a later version, or an earlier version. Whichever version doesn't have it. Other side, other side of the machine guns. Careful taking these off the sprue. Turret parts again. Okay. One last one has bombs and props. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the damn buster bomb. Two halves. Sprue R. Props have no burring. They're separate, so they're going to be put on, so you have to line them up, but no burring. So, bombs, regular bombs. Very nicely detailed on those fins. Alright. Oops, let's move to the clear, which they protect very nicely. Ooh, pretty. These are all the windows throughout the entire fuselage. Or you can use like crystal clear and just put them in yourself, not use those. These parts are covered, and I'm not going to take it off because it'll never stick back on. The main one, raised framing, so masking it up if you just use regular mask. This one's also got some clear tape over it to protect it. But, the quality, the clarity, is just outstanding. It's just, you have to do a good job with the cockpit because you're going to see everything. Different noses, I believe, for different variants. So, clear parts and put them back in the bag. Alright. 
So, let's look at the decals and the photo etch. Decals have a quieter bag. Just stick that down. Remember, we're sticking the decals to it. So, pretty thin piece of photo etch covered with plastic on both sides. Harnesses. And a few other parts I'm not sure, but harnesses for sure are on there. <clears throat> One version decals in registry, looking beautiful, made by Cartograph. Can't go wrong. Second one is the walkways, the roundels, walk forward of this line, walk down of this line, and the instruments, which is one piece. So if you choose to use that instrument panel, you can just decal solution your way down. Mini mouse. book and this is a fat instruction book. Here, history. Pause it if you want to read it. And pause it if you want to read it. And some cautions. Page one. It's CAD-like instructions which are going to be very helpful. Starting with your seat and your cockpit, of course, like most aircraft. And it looks like you're putting it all over the top of the bomb bay. Uh, one part I wasn't sure. Looks like it carries to the back of the fuselage. It's really thick paper, too. So then you start working on the parts inside the fuselage. Zoom in a little more since we're moving the book around. <clears throat> There's where some of the PE's going. Then you put your few slots halves together with that full run. You better make sure it's on there right or it's going to have a good fit. Then you're working on some turrets. And you're working on some more turrets. And you're working on the canopy, the inner framing. This guy color call outs. Some more for it looks like harnesses for another separate seat. You're putting the tail together with the um, elevators. That's how the tails go together. And then you're putting the bombs in the bomb bay. So is that the Dan Buster bomb or not? You tell me. You put the tail wheel on, but you can do that after you're all painted up. Lights. If you want the doors closed, it shows you what to do to close the doors. Close doors. Open doors, which I would do just because you'd see the bomb bay. Then, you're putting the canopy, the turrets, masking everything up. Then you're putting the elevators and the rudders, the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. Putting on this part over the front there. I would, I'm going to have to figure out a way to either temporarily close those doors or paint them separate and mask off the bomb bay. Then you're working on the engines. Nicely detailed, but you can still detail them up a little more. Putting the props together. Make sure you get the angles right, because apparently there's not a, a uh, jig for that. Engines in the nacelles. Again, you can cut open those panels. Does it show you can cut open those panels? Those parts I weren't sure are exhaust shrouds. Uh, it doesn't show you opening up the panels, but you know you can because you've seen the lines. And yeah, it does right there. Give you a little gray. You can open the panel. It's telling you what color to paint the inner side. Wings. And those parts that I weren't sure about were the flaps. Props going on. Of course, you leave the props on until after you're painted. Engine nacelles, other wing, same thing, just on the other side. Again, you can leave the landing gear off until you're painted. You can either have the flaps open or closed. You decide. Those are the one part I thought were for the bomb racks. They're actually for the flaps. These 
here are 14 pieces you have to remove, which go in various spots, right? You put the wings on. There. You have a CAD work of your completed Lancaster. There you have sprue maps. Numbered sprue maps. Numbered sprue maps. Decals. So I'm guessing you need to paint it pink underneath there if you're going to use that. Since the pink's not on the decals. And then there's your color callouts. So, black on the bottom, most of the other half. Is it black? It's RAF night. There's your paints. For the exterior. And again, you don't have to paint pink under there, so why are we just doing that pink on there? I don't know. Anyway, here's your other one. Same color callouts. And a few stencils you have. Placement. And this is your paint guide for the rest of it. So, freeze it as you need to. And there you have it. This beautiful. Get this stuff out of here. Beautiful new 48 scale Lancaster kit. We've been waiting for it. We got it. We're never going to get our 30 second wing nut wings ones. We have a 30 second HK model one, which is nice. This, they did a really good job on. I'm guessing that's not a damn buster because it's just falling out. Like I said, I am not a Lancaster expert, just a big old bomb. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you go out and buy this kit. I want to start seeing some get built because I won't get around to it this year probably. But you never know. Thanks for watching. Sit your ass to the bench, build a model.